So by the end of this video, you're going to have a photo album player like this one made in Python and Pygame. So if we go ahead and press the load button, we can load our album, which is going to be a folder. Right here, I have demo album. So I'm just going to load that in. And when I press select folder, the images are going to play. So here we have the first image, which is called brown mountain JPEG. As you can see, we have a UI here where you can pause, you can skip, and you can go back and you can unpause, and it'll play for you. So by default, there's a delay of five seconds for every picture. As you saw, we switched pictures after five seconds, but you can change that in the code. Finally, for images like these, this image was actually way bigger, but I implemented scaling. So the image is going to scale down to fit on our program. Thank you to this person for giving me the idea for this video. If you want to participate in videos like this, you can just leave your ideas in the comment section and I'll try to get around to making them. With that intro out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the boilerplate. All right, so here in our code, we have the boilerplate, which I'll leave in a pastebin link so you can copy and paste it into your script. So going through this boilerplate here, we have all of our imports that we're going to need. And all of them are standard except for glob, which allows us to cycle through our folder and retrieve our images. Also, we have button, which is a script that contains a button class, which I made in a previous video. It's actually one of my most popular videos. So if you want to check out how to make that in depth, then you can check the top right right now. Once again, this will be in the link in the description for you to copy and paste into your script. Okay, moving along here, we have our Pi game setup. If you don't know how to do this, I have a video on Pi game setup in the top right right now. We create our screen, we create two functions for our fonts. So we're going to have two fonts for this project, one is going to be bold and one is going to be regular. Here we have a bunch of our images, which are surfaces in Pygame, we have our background image, we have our window icon in the top left, and we have all of our button surfaces here. Here we have the main menu function, which controls the main menu. And in it, we just have a while loop that checks if we've quit the program. So running our code, we should get a blank canvas with our background on the screen. And that is exactly what we get. We also have our caption in the top left. Let's go ahead and get started in our main menu function by creating our text and two buttons. All right, so right at the top of our main menu function, we're going to create the surface for our title text and then the rect for it. So firstly, we're going to say title text surface is going to be equal to bold font and bold font is a function that takes in the font size and then returns the bold font. We're going to pass in 120 for the font size. And then now that we have our font object, we can say dot render. The text we're going to pass in is going to say photo album player. Anti-aliasing is going to be true, you don't have to worry about that. And the color is going to be equal to base text color, which is just going to be this color that we created here. Okay, so back here, we're going to create a rect for this. So we're going to say title uh, text rect is equal to title text surface dot get rect. And the center of our rect is going to be equal to the width of the screen divided by two on the x axis and 175 on the y axis. So it's going to be around the top of the screen, we're going to say screen dot blit title text surface on title text rect. So we're just going to put the text on the screen. And now we're going to create our load and quit buttons. For this, I'll just copy and paste them. And now as you can see, we have our load button and our quit button. So going through the parameters here, we have our surface, which is just going to be the image we use for our button. We have the position of the button, we have the text input, we have the font we use for the text input, we have the base color of the text and the hovering color of the text. And we're doing the same thing for load button and quit button, but we're replacing the text. All right, now we can go ahead and put the two buttons on the screen. So inside of the while loop, we're going to say load button dot update. And we're going to pass in screen. And then we'll duplicate this by using shift alt down in VS code. And we'll change this to quit button dot update screen running our code again, we're going to see our two buttons on the screen as you can see. Now we're going to create our file dialog window. So basically, we're going to create a window that allows us to choose our folder. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to check for mouse input. And then we're going to check if we press the load button. So here in the event loop after if event dot type equals pi game dot quit, we're going to say if event dot type equals pi game dot mouse button down. So if that's true, then we're going to say if load button dot check for input. And we're going to pass in the current mouse position, which is going to be a variable, we're going to create to store the current mouse position. So if that is true, then we're going to say file dialog window is equal to kinter dot tk. That's going to create a new instance of tk. 
we're going to say file dialog window dot withdraw. So basically, we won't be able to see the Kinter window, we're only going to be able to see the file dialog window, we're going to say that the file path of the folder is going to be equal to file dialog dot ask directory. And we're going to say the title is going to be choose your photo album. So we're going to see a pop up that prompts us to choose our photo album as the title. All right, so when we're done with that, we're going to say file dialog window dot destroy. And we're going to create an album player function, which is going to actually play the album and we're going to pass in the file path for that function. But since we haven't created it, I'll just comment this out for now. So up here, we can create our current mouse pause variable. So current mouse pause is going to be equal to pygame dot mouse dot get pause. All right, and now this should work. So to test if it does work, we're going to say print file path. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our code. Now if we hover over load, nothing's going to happen. But if we press it, and choose our folder here, and we close this, as you can see, it gives us the file path, which is at this file path. Alright, cool. So that works. Now we're going to do the same thing for the quit button. So we're going to say, if quit button dot check for input, when passing current mouse position again, then we're going to say the same thing as we did here. So pygame dot quit and sys dot exit. The reason we say sys dot exit is because without doing that, we're going to get some errors from Python. All right, finally, we're going to say load button and quit button dot change color, which is going to allow us to see a change of the text color when we hover over the buttons. So right here, we're going to say load button dot change color, and we're going to pass in current mouse position, we're going to do the same thing for quit button. And now we're done. So let's run our code. And hovering over the buttons should make them change color. And yes, they do. And if we press quit, we're going to quit. All right, we're done with the main menu function. And we can go ahead and create the actual photo album player function. All right, here on line 83, we're going to get started with the function. So we're going to say def album player. We're going to pass in folder path as a parameter. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to say screen dot blit background image at zero zero. And then we're going to create a bunch of local variables for album player, I'll go ahead and paste them in. So here image file paths is going to store all of the file paths for our image. So for example, if one of them was album player slash image one, it would store that here, and so on. Image names does the same thing except with the image names. And then current image index is the current image in the folder that we're on pause is a boolean variable storing whether or not we press the pause button and the same thing for unpause and the same thing for seek and rewind. Alright, now we're going to use glob to go inside of our folder and find all of the images in it. So the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to reference os and we're going to say os dot change directory to folder path. Now our glob is going to look at everything inside of this folder path. Now we can go to glob dot glob. We can pass in an asterisk to look at the current folder, we're going to say for file in glob dot glob, we're going to say current image path is going to be equal to an F string. And the F string is going to contain the folder path, and then a backslash and then the file. So for example, if we had an image called image one dot PNG within the album one folder, this would say album one backslash image one dot PNG, you can use F strings to reference data like this. Alright, then we're going to say image file paths dot append current image path and then image names dot append file. Alright, now we can create all of our buttons, which I'm just going to copy and paste once again, I'll leave a paste bin link for this in the description. Here we have our rewind pause play seek and load new album buttons. All of them are self explanatory except for the last one, which is going to be this button, which is going to allow us to load a new album, even if we're not done playing our current album. Next, we're going to create our cooldown. So we're going to have a five second cooldown between images. So we can say cooldown equals 5000. So this is going to be 5000 milliseconds or five seconds. Above that, we're going to say previous time equals pi game dot time dot get ticks. So basically, the logic is going to work in a way that we reference the previous time, then we reference the current time, 
we get the difference between those two times. And if the difference is greater than five seconds, that means we've waited for more than five seconds and that we can cycle to the next image. All right, so now that we have that, we can create our two text surfaces. The first one is gonna say the name of the image. So for example, here we would have brownmountain.jpg. And the second one is gonna say the image count. So the image index within the folder. So pasting them in here, as you can see, we have photo title text surface and rect and image count text surface and rect. So the first one just references image names with the current image index. And the second one references the current image index plus one. And then we put a backslash and then len image names. So for example, this would be one out of five. Here, we're gonna create some logic to scale down the image if it's too big. So firstly, we're gonna say new image rect equals pygame.image.load. We're gonna pass in image file paths at the current image index. So we're gonna say if the image surfaces height is greater than 500, then we decrease it and we also scale down the width with it. And if the width is greater than 800, we scale it down and scale the height down with it. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this logic here and I'll explain it. So if new image surface dot get height is greater than 500, then we are going to say pi game dot transform dot scale, we're going to pass in our surface and the new dimensions for this is going to be firstly new image surface dot get width multiplied by 500 divided by new image surface dot get height. So this makes the height of the new image 500 and it scales down the width according to that using some basic math. The same thing happens when the width is greater than 800, except we put 800 as the width and then we scale down the height according to that. All right, we can put all of this stuff on the screen. So like I just did. So once again, this is gonna be a pastebin link in the description. We're gonna finally say pi game dot display dot update and we can go ahead and create our while loop. So while true, we're going to check for quitting. So we can just paste this in and we can change that typo. Now we're gonna check if we've pressed the rewind button, the seek button, or the play button, or the pause button, or the load new album button. All right, so here, if we've pressed the mouse button, then we get the current position of the mouse then we check if we press the rewind button, then if our current image index is greater than zero, so we're not at the start of the image, then our current image index is subtracted by one and we go to the previous image. And the rewind button pressed Boolean variable becomes the same thing happens for the seek button, except we increase the current image index by one. If we already pressed pause, then we're going to check if we pressed play, then pause is false and unpaused is true. But if we have not pressed pause, then if we press pause, unpaused is false and paused is true. Hope that makes sense. If we press load new album, we're gonna do the same thing as we did in the main menu function. So right here, all of this code is repeated. We load in a new album and then we use that. We're gonna get the current time. So we're gonna say current time equals pi game dot time dot get underscore ticks. So now that we've done all of this, we can check the current time and if the difference between the previous time and the current time is greater than five seconds, then we change the image. So if current time minus previous time is greater than or equal to the cooldown, or we pressed any of the buttons, then unpause is equal to false. So we revert it back. So now that five seconds has passed, we check if we're not already at the last image and we have not pressed seek and we've not pressed rewind and we've not paused the program, then we increase our current image index by one. We put the background on the screen, we put the rewind button on the screen. If we pause, then we put the play button on the screen. And if we are not paused, then we put the pause button on the screen. We put the seek button and the load new album buttons on the screen. We repeat the image scaling here. So if the image is too big, we make it smaller. We put the new image on the screen. We put the photo title text and the image count text on the screen as well. We update the display. We create previous time again. And we set seek button pressed and rewind button pressed to false. And now saving our code, believe it or not, we're actually done. So now we have our main menu function working and we also have our album player function working. Let's go ahead and run this. And now we have this working. We press load, we can load in demo album and here it prints it out, but I actually forgot to uncomment this. So let's go ahead and uncomment that, close this and run it again. Now, if we load a album, we can do that, uh, but actually local variable new image surface referenced before assignment. Okay, so line 134, let's go ahead and go to it. All right, so what happened is I forgot to reference new image surface. Okay, so right before here, we're gonna say new image surface is equal to pygame.image.load, and then we reference image file paths at the current image index. That should fix the bug there. 
can press load, demo album, and now we have Brown Mountain. We can pause, we can go forward, backward, unpause, and yeah, all of that works. If we just leave it and wait for five seconds, as you can see, it automatically switches. Now if we press load album, we can load our other album. So here, demo album two, and we have a whole new set of images. Here we have Moraine Lake in Canada, then a temple in Nepal, where I'm from. Here we have a phone wallpaper, which we scaled down. And here we have Vancouver port in Canada. So yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. And now you know how to make a photo album player using Python. If you liked the video or it was useful in any way to you, consider liking the video. And if you really liked it and want to see more, consider subscribing because a whopping 420 trillion percent of you are not subscribed. So if we got that number down to something like 419 trillion by the end of this month, that would be great. So consider subscribing. Sorry for not uploading for a while. I hope to see you in the next video. But until then, have a good day.